What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on how to create materials inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is gonna be part two in my series on creating and working with materials inside a blender. You can check out that full playlist by visiting thecgessentials.com slash materials. So in last week's video, we talked about how to import custom images and apply them to a surface inside of blender in order to create kind of a texture image. This week, we're gonna get into something a little more in depth that's going to help us make these more realistic. Okay, so this week I really wanna dive into how we can start setting up more realistic materials using nodes. And so in order to do that, what we wanna do is, remember last week we used the uh, material editor or the material properties window over here on the right hand side in order to add materials to an object, right? So you could like adjust colors, other things like that. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use a more advanced way of adding materials called nodes. And so in order to access nodes, what you wanna do is you just wanna jump over into this tab labeled shading. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop you over into this window right here um, that's going to give you a 3D viewport. You may have a couple other windows in here. I usually close those. This is gonna give you a 3D viewport, but then down below there's a window um, that if you click on the drop down and find it, it's called the shader editor. What the shader editor does is it allows you to edit the aspects of materials inside of your model. And so the very first thing I wanna do, because this object doesn't have a material associated on it, is we wanna click on the new button. So when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to add this kind of like node setup in here. Now notice how each one of these is a little window and there's a little like noodle looking thing connecting them. Um, so we've got all these different slots and you can plug these different things in in order to do different kinds of outputs. Right, so in this case, right, the material that you're gonna see in your scene is going to be driven by everything that's input into this principled BSDF shader. And so one thing to note about this is before we make any changes, you do wanna make sure that you're in material preview mode up here. So you can just click on this button right here in order to get into material preview mode. Notice how now my materials are showing up, where if you're in solid mode, that's not going to happen. Now, notice how if I come in here and I make these changes, right, so if I click in here, I drag on this, this is pretty much the same as when we were in layout mode over here and you were adjusting and you were adjusting the different settings over here. So notice how this is actually showing me that principled BSDF in here. Um, so you're making a lot of the same changes. So for example, if I was to change the metallic to one in here, notice if I go back to the shader editor, the metallic right here changed to one as well. So those are kind of adjusting the same things. Now, where this gets really valuable though, is not only can you change things about your material in here, and you can. And um, let's do this real quick. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna do a shift A, and there's actually an add-on called the, and so there's actually an add-on in here called the Tri Lighting Add-on. And what you can do is you can do a shift A and add three point lights in here that are actually going to light your model. I'm gonna jump over into render mode really quick and just kind of bring these down, bring the distance down and bring the light up to like 25. And so all I'm doing is I'm jumping into rendered mode so you can see some of these changes, right? So remember that rendered mode is different than material preview mode. Material preview mode is going to basically show you the material in the 3D space. But rendered mode, depending on actually either way, um, whichever render engine you have selected, this is actually going to apply light to your object. And so notice how this looks different because it's actually being lit by these artificial lights in the scene. But now what I wanna do is I wanna show you what happens when you change some of these settings in here. So for example, let's say that we wanted this object to be shinier. Well, what we can do is we can bring the roughness value down like this. And when you do that, and by the way, this is going to show up better if you do this in cycles, but everything's gonna get slower. But notice how as I adjust the roughness of this object, you can actually see the light reflecting off of it, right? So basically what we're doing is we're changing one of the settings in this shader, which is basically a material that we've applied to our object that actually like simulates real world light conditions. But notice how as I make that change, the way that it interacts with the light in your scene changes, right? Notice how if I make this metallic 
the material is just gonna work in a completely different way than if it's not metallic. And so this is going to really kind of affect the way your materials are gonna look inside of your scene. And so we've got all of these different settings in here that basically give the lighting engine more information about the way that light should act in your scene. Now, let's toggle back into material preview mode and let's take a look at what this means if you actually apply texture materials to your object. Okay, and so up until this point, what we were doing is we were adjusting numbers to affect the way that that renders. Well, there's also a way that you can do this where you can actually use images in order to simulate those different things like the roughness and the metallic and other things like that. And so to do this, let's go ahead and let's download a material from Polyhaven. Polyhaven is a website that gives you access to different free assets. In this case, we're going to go into the textures tab right here. And I want to find something that's got a little bit of shininess to it, but also like kind of like some roughness. So um, this wood floor deck could probably be good. I also like using tile. Um, so let's see if we can find a tile in here. And what I want is I want a tile material that's got a really strong, um, and I'm not seeing anything I'm really liking in here. Maybe we'll go back to the wood. Actually, this tiled floor might look good. Um, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for something that should have some shininess on the surface, but also areas like this grout where the way things like reflect is going to be different. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this tiled floor 01 for right now. So what happens with these materials is not only is there an image file that you can bring in as a texture, but it also brings in these various maps. And so what these maps do is if you've ever seen like a normal map like this, these contain information about the way materials should act in three dimensions, right? So like a tile material should look kind of bumpy. Well, if we zoom in and look at this, notice how this has different information brought in here with different colors. So in the case of a normal map, right, this information is stored as like uh, different colors in here, and then your engine is going to read it and simulate bumps. You've also got maps in here that tell your engine if something should reflect or not, and if it should be bumpy in different locations. And so I, I have, I've actually written a short guide about PBR materials, which I'll make available for download. I'll put it up at the cgessentials.com slash PBR materials. I made it for a different channel, but it's very applicable to this one as well. So um, I will link to that on this page. You can actually download and get more information about those maps. But in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna download this set of textures to include the maps. And so we're gonna go ahead and leave the resolution at 2K for right now. Notice how if you click on this button on the right hand side, you can download the individual maps that are in here, or you can also just click on the download button and just bring them all down, which is what I wanna do. So I'm gonna click on the download button. And so what I did is I just downloaded and I um, extracted this folder, but notice how this comes with different PBR maps in here. So in this case, this one came down with the diffuse map, a displacement map, a normal map, and a roughness map. We're mostly gonna focus on the normal map and the roughness, but notice how if you look at these, the diffuse map is going to be the map that actually has the information about the actual tiled material in here. So that's what you see. But then you take these other maps, like this is a displacement map, which is going to move your geometry up and down. And um, what that's going to do is that's gonna make it look more three-dimensional. Then you've also got the roughness map, which you're gonna plug in and it's going to tell this where to reflect, right? And it stores that information in kind of like grayscale. So how dark or light is going to affect how much it's going to reflect. But let's jump back over into Blender and let's take a look at how we can plug these in. So. The first thing we want to do, and there's a faster way to do this, which I'll talk about at the very end of this video. But for now, I want you to understand the concepts. So what we want to do is we want to go down into our node editor. I want to do a shift A, and I want to look for an image texture node. What an image texture node does is it allows you to go find and open an image as data, which you can then plug into a node. And so our first image texture node is going to go into the base color. And so if I drag this into the base color right here, notice how nothing's really happening, right? I'm getting this like fake reflection from my environment, um, but nothing else is happening. That's because we haven't told it which image to open up. In this case, we want to bring in a diffuse map. Um, so we're just going to click on the open button. We want to open this folder and we want to load in the diffuse map. 
Well, notice how when we load in the diffuse map, what that does is that actually brings this image in here and applies it to this surface. Now, one of the things you're gonna know is you're gonna note that this is way too reflective, right? It looks like a glass. That's because we were playing with the roughness map earlier. And so notice how when you play with the roughness map, what it does is it makes it look reflective. Well, we don't really care about this value because what we want to do is we want to bring in a second image texture node. So I'm just going to do a shift A right here. And again, just image texture. And that one is going to go in the roughness. And in this case, we want to load in the roughness map. So I'm going to click on the open button right here. And in this case, we want to find the rough we're gonna double click on this and bring it in. Well, notice what that does is that changes this object so that we're only getting reflections in certain areas. So notice how parts of this look shinier than other parts due to the way that that map is bringing in the data. So this is a much more realistic way that light might reflect off of this object right here. So notice how you're also not getting reflections on like the grout. Um, and the reason why is because the data um, that's in here is telling this to not do that. Okay, and so one thing to note when you're plugging these in is remember that the roughness map is actually kind of a grayscale image. What that means is that means the information is being stored in a way that is um, basically color graded based on grays, um, blacks and whites, um, but it doesn't have any other colors in it. So as a general rule, when you're plugging something like that in, what you want to do is you want to change the color space on this to non-color. So you really want to take that and change this to a non-color piece of data. And so next, we want to take some information and make this look bumpier. And so to make this look bumpier, what we want to do is we want to bring in the normal map. And so we're going to do a shift A, we're going to do an image texture node right here. I'm going to bling, bring this in. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the normal map that came along with this and we want to open it up. One thing to note about this is before we do this, notice how this is kind of a purple color while this one is a yellow. That means they're taking different data types in here. And so what we want to do is we want to do a shift A and we want to look for a normal map node right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to drag the color in here and then the normal out here and what that's basically going to change the information in here so that it's now the appropriate kind of information for for your node input right here right so what we've done is we've taken this information over here we've brought it into the normal map and then plugged it into the normal and so we do want to make sure that we've switched this over to the non-color data as well but notice what that normal map does is it adds bumpiness to this surface, right? So watch what happens if I just drag, or watch what happens if I remove this node. So if I drag this node off, notice how this surface starts looking a lot flatter. But if I drag the node back in here, notice how I get a lot of like bumpy information from the map that makes pieces and parts of the surface look bumpier and therefore more realistic. And so you can see how now our image looks significantly more realistic than it did when we just plugged in this original map right here. Now, I did wanna show you one faster way to do this, which can be a massive time saver for you. There is a tool inside of Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into material preview mode. You might've heard there's an add-on built into Blender called Node Wrangler. And so you can go up into your preferences and you wanna look for Node Wrangler and make sure that it's enabled. And this is basically a tool set to speed up your workflow when working with nodes. But what this is going to do is in addition to giving you a bunch of tools for that, it also gives you the ability to automatically set up this principled BSDF with your PBR materials. So I'm gonna delete these out. And what we wanna do is we wanna click on your principled BSDF. This is only going to work if you have Node Wrangler enabled, but we're gonna do a Control Shift T. And so when you do a control shift T, this is gonna pop up a window in here. And depending on where you found these, it's basically gonna go through and it's gonna use keywords and um, little abbreviations in order to figure out what each one of these things is. But I'm gonna take all of these maps, I'm gonna select all of them, and I'm going to click on the option for principled texture setup. Well, notice what this does is this comes in here and this automatically sets up not only your textures in here, but it also, sets up your mapping over here, which means you have the ability to like adjust 
the way that your material sits on this surface right here as well. And it sets all of that up automatically. So I didn't have to come in here and do any of this. Notice how it set these to non-color the way they're supposed to be. And it set up a displacement map in here as well. Now, in this case, you're probably not going to see a lot from the displacement because there's not a lot of supporting geometry in here. Um, I don't want to get too far into that, but that's basically a map that like moves everything up and down to actually make it look three dimensional. But if we toggle over into cycles and look at this material, you can see how this has set this material up with all of those different maps and it looks a lot better. And so one final thing to know is let's say that we were to add a cube in here. Remember that this material you've created actually lives in your model. So you can then take it and apply it the same way we talked about in the first video. So we can select this object, click over into your um, material properties right here, and that material is going to show up in the drop down. Now it's a good idea to label your materials when you do this so you can actually find them. So instead of material 05, I'm going to type in tile floor. But notice how I can take this click the drop down and select tile floor and it's going to apply that material to this object as well. So you can use this in order to quickly apply materials that have been applied to one object and multiple objects inside of Blender. All right, so that's kind of a high level overview of PBR materials. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. So I'll also link to that PBR materials guide on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.